Good morning. Let's talk about integration by parts today. So we've already covered substitution, which is the inverse of the chain rule, and what I called the, I guess, power rule for integration, which is just the opposite of the power rule for uh, derivatives. So integration by parts is the opposite or the inverse for the chain rule. Not the chain rule. Did I say the chain rule? Gosh darn dang, I just ruined everything. Gross conceptual errors. The product rule. It is the opposite of the product rule. So <clears throat> it's actually pretty straightforward when you're just looking at there are surprising complexities once you get into it. But as far as the rule goes, it's pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna warn you right now, my notation for this is terrible. I completely abuse notation. But I like the way that I do it. Because when you're on a um, <clears throat> when you're working in a timed event, it gives a what I feel is a good balance of understanding and speed. You'll see as I go along. So u v prime. So I'm using the prime to show, show that it's a derivative. Is u v prime plus u prime v. This is the product rule for derivatives. So if we rearrange this a little bit, then we have uv prime equals uv prime minus u prime v. Okay? What I did is I took the whoop, blue, this guy, nope, that one stayed there. I took this and moved it over to that side and then flipped the sides around. So then we integrate both sides and we have integral of u dv equals uv, because the integral of a derivative is just the uh, original function, minus v du integrated. And that, more or less, is the entire derivation and eh, proof of why integration by parts exists. Now, yeah, that's pretty much the entire thing. So, it's not really intuitive just looking at the formula, how this plays out. Um, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're, you're gonna to wanna to choose part of the function to be u, part of the function that you're given to be dv. So what you're working with is you're finding a part for that and a part for that. And the part of the function that you're gonna want, I know I haven't really given any examples yet, so you're just gonna kind of flailing in the wind, that's okay, you'll be fine. Um, the u part, as a general terrible idea, you want some, to pick something that goes away. Not easily go away. So the u, you want to choose something that easily goes away. When you take the derivatives, it disappears. Not necessarily true for dv. So, some of the general advice given, which is pretty good, um, is you want, this is how to choose the U. And you really don't have any sense of perspective for this yet, but later on you'll be like, oh, that kind of seems reasonable. Um, logarithmic, so the first choice of U is if there's a logarithm, like an LN, that would be a good choice. Um, inverse trig, we haven't gotten to those yet, but we will get to those next time. Uh, algebraic, this is um, gonna be your power rule kind of thing. If you see an x, an x squared, x cubed, then that would be your third choice, which happens quite a bit. And this would be a trig, you know, talking about sine, cosine, and this is exponential. And this is just a rule of thumb about how you want to choose them. Um, there are plenty of exceptions. And then when you get down to the trig and inverse trig, this order usually doesn't matter that much. Because um, the idea with trig and, in, and exponentials is they're never going to disappear. You can keep taking integral or derivatives of them, and they will always be around. So they... These are the three that you're going to choose.
probably 90% of the time, when possible. Okay. So when I do the problems, I pretty much write this part out every time I do an integration of my parts problem. Um, it's quick enough, and my I can't memorize this formula. My memory is on par with a goldfish, so I don't even I don't even try to compete. I I'm good with that. So I try and derive that equation every time. Okay, and moving down, I'll move up just a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's just do some problems. We're gonna jump right into things because. That will probably be the easiest way to see how this works. So let's grab a integral of x to the e to the, e to the x. Okay. So our spider instincts going for this. First thing we do is we look at try and be like, all right, can we just do a power rule for this? And we can't because we see two things multiply to each other, and we can't easily multiply it all together to get something that would be the power rule. Because if it was x times x squared, then it would be like, ah, x cubed, and then go from there. Um, we then look for substitution. Is one of these things a derivative of the other thing? So we take the derivative of e to the x, and we get e to the x, which is specifically not x, therefore that's useless to us. So then we look for, all right, is something going to disappear if I take the derivative of it, derivative of it enough times? And it's like, yes x will disappear if I take the derivative of it enough times. Because x to the first goes to x to the 0, which is 1. Take the derivative of 1, 1 goes to 0. So yes, it will. And that's what we're going to do. So we start by writing out the prod, um, integration by parts. Interesting fact, integration, integration by par partie is the French equivalent. So we say, what is it, integration by Parts, IBP in English, in French it's IPP. Haha. <laughs> Useless. It's never going to help you to know that. Completely obscure information. Except for probably a whole country of people that went to high school and know it. Alright. So, we'll start by writing out the product rule UV prime equals UV prime plus U prime V. Moving it around, uv prime equals uv quantity prime minus u prime v. Integral u dv equals uv minus integral v d u. And so then here then, so I do this pretty much every time I do the problem. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it keeps me from making mistakes, and that is worth it. It's a reasonable trade-off. So for you, use the thing we're going to want to disappear. That can disappear when we take the derivatives of it. So we're going to call this x. I'm going to call dv e to the x. Okay? So then we need to find du, because we're going to have to have du there. We're going to have to find v, because we're going to need v there and there. So derivative of x is 1, 1 dx. And the integral of e to the x is e to the x. Um, it's usually a lot easier for me, at least mentally, to take derivatives, partially because derivatives have a much more intuitive sense because they're just the slope. So I always say that I always I always know the right answers, um, but the problem is I know a lot of the wrong answers too, and it's hard for me to differentiate between the two. So a lot of times when I'm trying to take an integral real quick in my head, like this, um, I just write something down, and then I take the derivative of it and make sure that it's correct. So I'm like, e to the x? Yeah, it's probably gonna have something with e to the x. So yep, take the derivative, yeah, seems reasonable. So it's usually quicker than for me to do that than to agonize and make sure I'm 100% correct going from uh, derivative to the integral. Mostly correct, and then check yourself. Okay, so now let's write this out in a more formal, here we go, u times v, x, e to the x, minus integral v, v, e to the x, du is dx. And I, hmm, 
I wonder if there's supposed to be a plus C here. I wonder if that just kind of gets lost in the mix. Either way, don't worry about writing the plus C here. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but not needed. We'll write plus C at the end when we're done. Okay, so we have an x e to the x minus integral of e to the x is e to the x. So we'll then write this one final time as e to the x times x minus 1 plus c. And you're like, wow, that integration by parts really worked well. It felt kind of like magic, and then it worked. So let's do a quick trial just so I can kind of sort of almost convince you that this is the product rule. Hmm, did we use pink already? Now nah, we're going to go, ooh, red. All right. So I'm going to do uv prime equals uv prime plus, oh no, I'm going to hit the camera. Now I'm good. Okay. u equals e to the x, v equals x minus 1 plus c. Nah, look at that. The c just goes away. The plus c is actually, it's added, so we do that separately. Uh, trying to confuse people, create gross conceptual errors, lead people astray. That'd be a terrible shepherd. All right. So derivative of e to the x, e to the x. Um, derivative of v is x minus 1. Or v is x minus 1, dv is just 1 dx. Hmm. Hmm. I assume that's right. We'll go for that. All right. So then u times v prime. So u is e to, e to the x. v prime is dx. Okay, yes, plus u prime e to the x times x minus 1, u prime v, okay, dx. And we can factor out the dx and go off to one side. And so then we'll have, I'm going to leave the dx out here. So then we'll have e to the x plus e to the x times x minus e to the x. Aha! I'll be honest, I was worried there that I had totally messed this up for a second. That looks more like an eraser then. There we go. Darker gray. So then e to the x is cancelled out and we're left with x e to the x dx. Probably hitting the pen too hard to do softly. So I don't get those clickety clacks. No one likes those clickety clacks. All right, so x e to the x, is that what we started with? Was that what we started with? Here we go, x e to the x, dx. Okay, hmm, there's no dx in there. Meh, it's okay. We'll, let, we'll leave it to be implied. So, a little bit of confidence that both the chain rule and integration by parts work. All right, now that you're full of confidence, we're going to go on to some that are a little bit more adversarial. Yeah, adversarial is probably the right word. Integration by parts can escalate quickly in life. So this one, it's kind of a trick. Um, I don't like to use the word trick in mathematics, but it's kind of is. All right, so same philosophy uv prime equals u prime yeah uv prime plus u prime v uv prime equals uv quantity prime minus u prime v integral u dv equals uv minus v du integral all right so now the question is what do we choose to be why? Because we only have one function thing right there. So 
but we break up as the U and the V. And the trick here is we rewrite this as 1 times natural log of x. That might not be intuitive. It's terribly not intuitive in any way. And that's one of those things why it's important to show you this, just because it'll pop up from time to time, and it's pretty easy once you know how to do it. Turns out most of life is pretty easy when you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. ah, so many things I wish they taught me younger in life. This I, that is also French. That's not French. All right, so let's say U is the thing we want to be disappear, and per our liat, liat, li, liat, um, you usually want to choose ln of x to be the u when you have a chance. And then dv will choose to equal 1. That way v equals x, integral of 1 is x, and dv equals 1 over x. Okay? And then, uh, let's see if I can do this with keeping everything kind of in frame. Yeah, almost terrible choice of positioning. Or I could just move the video up slightly. There we go. Success. So now we have natural log of x, u times v, times x minus integral of v, which is x du, this is u, 1 over x dx, which equals x natural log of x, integral of 1, so x ln of x minus x, and we'll do a plus c, because there's a constant involved. See? Not too hard. Not too hard. Um, again, I, I do recommend actually writing this out every time. Um, it's so easy to forget that negative sign, and it's so easy to maybe get du uh, or udv instead and just get things mixed up. And if you keep the same pattern every time, um, I think it's worthwhile. There's an, um, another uh, popular strategy out there. I think it's called like tabular integration by parts. And it's just a way of going through them really, really quickly. Um, we'll see here, sometimes you have to do um, multiple um, integration by parts to get what you want. And that can be, and you, if you go through it, the process as um, iterative, I think, that's the term, over and over again, it's good to have a better pattern. Um, my pattern is not the quickest, my algorithm. And so choosing a better algorithm for the long haul might be useful. But for this test, you're not gonna. You're probably not be, gonna be given anything that arduous. So it's not really. It's not the shortcut is not worth it. At least I don't think so, and at least not for this. So not to disparage any other more uh, streamlined techniques. This is just what I've found to be a good balance of notation bashing and expediency and understanding. All right, uv prime equals uv quantity prime minus v du. All right, let's move this one over. No, move that one over, then flip the two. Yep, I'm good with that. Integral. Oh, man. See? See? This is me getting overconfident and carried away. All right, this goes over, this one goes over, minus v u prime, u prime v. Mm. Integral u dv equals u v minus integral v d u. There we go. Now, pretty much always choose um, u equals the natural log. When the natural log is available, you usually choose it. So, we'll see if that works this time. dv will then equal x. v will equal x squared over 2. Gosh, I hope, I hope I didn't choose this one because it's an exception to the rule. That just makes me look dumb. 
All right, so we have u is natural log of x, dv equals x, and this goes to that, so x squared over two, yep, yep, got that, okay, okay. Focus, focus. Change colors. Yeah. It's gonna really hurt you guys on the test and when you can't change colors all the time at your beck and call. Bad training on my part. UV, ooh, I really like that too. I should just copy and paste that one too and use it for all my twos. X squared over two times one over X DX. Change colors to provide contrast. Ooh, I like the sky blue. Cancel, cancel. And the one half comes out equals one half X squared natural log of X minus one half. And then this would be X squared. Nope, didn't pick up my pen enough there. X squared over two, which becomes four plus C. Up, 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 up. Yes, indeed. When we pick up that extra um, factor of two on the second one. So one half X squared natural log of X minus X squared over four plus C. Okay, gosh, we're really good at these. These are not nearly as hard as I thought they were. That's like three of them done already. Now you probably don't won't see anything this straightforward on the um, AP exam, but these are the sort of things that you should be able to solve and recognize, and they're kind of going to be implied. In ooh, ooh, well that escalated quickly. All right, so. This one has none of the first three that we'd want. Nothing here is gonna disappear. We can take derivatives of this forever and it will never go away. So, mm, 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 mm. let me put this in the middle. Deep breath. So we're gonna say that U V prime equals u v prime plus u prime v u v prime equals u v quantity prime minus u prime v move over slightly and we're going to have integral u dv equals u v oh that's a w which becomes quite a confusing variable because and it's like, is it two U's or is it just a separate variable? All sorts of unnecessary confusion. All right. So I don't think here it's going to matter which one we choose to be um, U and which one's going to be V. Because this is another one of those, like the natural log of X things, which is kind of a, a trick that everyone should see once in life. Um, everyone should understand once in life. Because once you understand it, it might, you know, might not be fluent at it. But I think you can get it with enough time. Deserted on a island with nothing but sticks and mud and time, you too will be able to solve this problem. So I'm going to say e of x equals, or u equals e of x, and I'm going to say dv equals sine of x. v du integral of e dx is, or derivative is e dx, and so I'm just gonna, the way I do um, this is, so I just write cosine of x up top and I leave a little gap here. Cause I'm never quite sure about that negative sign. Um, what I do know though, is that sine of x looks like this and cosine of x looks like this. So if you look right here at zero, the derivative is going to be negative. So um, if you're taking the derivative of cosine, you're gonna get negative sine. And if you look at zero right here, if you take the derivative of sine, you're going to get um, positive cosine. 
And that's because the, the derivative, the slope at this point at zero, is going to be positive, upwards. So I'm, I just write up cosine, because I know that they're going to be related, and then I figure the sine out using the derivatives. So the derivative of cosine is negative, so these should have opposite sides. So negative cosine. Yep, that seems right. All right, so negative cosine of x, derivative, double negative, sine of x. Okay, and so from here, we will write out, see if I can get enough space here. So we have the integral of u dv equals uv. So we have e to the x times negative cosine of x minus integral v negative cosine of x. I'm going to take this off time and just cancel out the negatives. Well, if there's not a negative, no, d u e dx. And this should be dx here, so then this would give us dx. There's probably a dx there too. Is there a dx there? There's not a dx there, but there should be. Okay, ah, terrible notation. All right, so now we see this, we're like, all right. So now we have a slightly different situation, but pretty much the same situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this all over again. So then we have, we're gonna still say u equals e to the x, because at this point we're kind of comfortable, comfortable with that, du equals e to the x dx. And in case there was Lot, that was lost on you. We're trying to find the integral of this portion right here. And I'm ignoring everything else. Um, dv, we'll choose that to be cosine of x. Ideally, you should write u and dv first and then fill in everything else. I'm getting lazy. Lazy. Um, well, it's going to be sine of x. And Sine of x is positive, so it's going to have the same sign. And so sine of x, cosine of x. Yes, don't change the signs on that. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Check. Okay. And then we're going to do something like this. And we're going to say integral e to the x cosine of x dx equals. And then we still have up here our equation u times v, move up slightly, e to the x, sine of x, minus integral of v, sine of x, du, e dx, dx. Okay, and so now your thought process is, wow, that helped us out, none at all. Sort of, sort of, kind of. All right, so I'm gonna write this whole thing out. So we have, so use a different pen color to show that we're changing thought processes, boarding another metaphorical train. So integral of u dv equals, what is u dv? Hmm. Ah, e to the x sine of x. So u is e to the x, dv is sine of x dx. So we have integral e to the x sine of x dx equals <clears throat> negative e to the x cosine of x plus, and then this section right here, e to the x sine of x minus integral sine of x e to the x dx. Okay. So this is what we want to look at right here. 
So what we do then is we're like, we recognize through inspection. I love that word, through inspection. It's kind of like, well, then we add mystery chemical X or hand wavium or the contrivium chemical or saying that it's beyond the scope of this class. It's like, ah, oh, okay, you just, just want to say it without any justification. All right. <clears throat> so these two are the same. So what we can do is we can actually move this sine of x e dx over the other side. So we have two integral e to the x sine of x dx equals, let's see what we got here. We have e to the x, factor that out, sine of x minus cosine of x. <clears throat> and we'll move the two over, cancel that out, and e to the x sine of x equals that. Now, I'm pretty confident and cocky in life, but not quite that confident and cocky. So I'm going to ask my friend Wolfram Alpha on this one. e to the x sine of x, is that what we're going for? e to the x sine of x, okay. Yes. So, ooh, there we are. Hello, Wolfram. Integral of e to the x times sine of x. I love Wolfram Alpha. Love Wolfram Alpha. Ooh, ooh, haha. -ha. Oh, they forgot the I forgot the plus c. Outrageous. Bush League, JV. I need to pick up the pace here. All right, one half e to the x sine of x minus cosine of x. And I got one half e to the x sine of x. Yes. Okay, plus C. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, man. I need to. Mm. <clears throat> but the thought process is correct. Man. Missing the swing and the miss. All right, so that's the idea for... Um, so going back here, the idea was we have two transcendentals things that don't disappear when we take the derivatives of them and to solve this we have to do it twice and then have it cancel itself out so we we did the integration by parts twice and then moved it moved the uh, uh, part of the integral part from our solution over to what we were trying to find and able to solve that way so that is a um, technique to keep in mind. All right, hope, hope. let's do a couple more. Let's, then I'll move that guy up so I don't lose him. Hmm. Okay, this one's probably not too bad. Probably. All right, so first thing we do is we look at it and we're like, we try and find um, so we look for the power rule, we look for a substitution because we want to look for one thing that's a derivative of another thing, which we have here, maybe, hmm. not sure, hmm. because we really can't, so first thing you'd see is, well, maybe u equals x cubed, so du equals 3x squared. So then you're like, well, dx. And so then you try and do something like, so then x squared equals du over 3dx. And you're trying to do something like u cosine of du over 3dx integral and you're still left with a dx over here and then things get messy and that is that would be my first thought when I when I approach this problem but that is not going to work out well so instead we're going to take it along the tact of trying to say that u equals x squared so then du equals 2x 
dx. Yeah, let's go for this. I have a good feeling about this. I'm going to say that uh, x dx du over 2. So then we rewrite this as this is x squared times x. And so we're going to get u cosine of u and then dx is or x dx is du over 2. And we'll one half. We're going to have to make a special note not to forget that one half because it'll be really easy to forget that in the fray. All right, so now oh, I chose a terrible. <sighs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to. So many of you have probably seen this already. What I did was I chose the same variable that I'm going to try and use for integration by parts. So nothing wrong, just. Any of you that have programming experience, when you try and reuse the same variable for multiple things, things get confusing in life. So I'm just going to be shady here and change that over to z. So 1 half z cosine of z dz. And that's just to keep the variable straight. All right, so now I'm going to try and use integration by parts, uv prime equals u v prime plus u prime v uh, u v prime equals in um, u v prime minus u prime v integral of u dv equals u v minus v d u there we go. Yes. Yep. Zoom out slightly so I can keep that in my view. Do some gray. I haven't used much gray. Gray is not the most positive of colors. So I've kind of avoided it. But even the negative colors need love. All right. Focus. Focus. So we're going to say that U equals Z dv equals cosine of z mm -hmm. v then equals sine of z all right and the derivative of sine is positive so we'll have the same sign there okay and then du equals one it's actually one dz i'm getting lazy with my yeah, no, 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 I'm not going to write it in. But you're right, I should. I should. Um, that's how I miss things like plus C at the end. Ah, so close. All right. Put these together, U times V, Z, sine. Ooh, I do like that blue. So this is from this part down here. Oop, arrow. Z sine of Z, U times V, minus integral of v sine of z du du is one Oop. okay so z sine of z minus integral of sine is positive cosine So minus a positive, v to u, we'll do a plus c. Does that seem reasonable? It does. Now we know that z equals u, which equals x squared. Ah, is there supposed to be a... No. Okay. Yep. I was almost worried that I forgot a dx or dz somewhere. But I didn't. It's fine. It was there was a dz here which then disappeared. So so we have x squared sine of x squared minus cosine x squared 
plus C. This is probably a different C actually, but it's okay. They're all just constants. And my intuitive is, oh, sine of x squared minus cosine of x squared. There's probably a trig formula that does something with that. And no, because there's an x squared there. And then we can't forget the 1 half. Tra it'd be tragic if we drop that 1 half, just like we called we were going to drop it at the very beginning. All right, x squared, sine of x squared, plus c, plus c. Yep. And I'm going to go with Wolfram on this one. Again, 100% confident. But just in case. All right, so x cubed cosine of x squared, integral of x to the third times cosine of one half x squared sine of x plus, plus, oh no, I messed up somewhere along the line there. So, Derivative of sine is positive cosine. Yep, yep. Hmm. I have no idea where I made that mistake. I don't doubt that I made it. Just. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So, let's do the integral of cosine of z. Yep, all right, positive sine of x. Interesting. Interesting. Bush league. Well, I'm not going to track down that negative sign. You guys got better things to do with your lives and watch me chase a negative sign down the rabbit hole. But at least I'm confident that I had the right concept on that one. Oh, man. So I missed the last two of them. First one I missed the plus C, and the other one I missed the uh, um, missed a negative sign. Gosh. Gosh, gee willikers. But that is one of the reasons why I try and derive the um, uh, the integration by parts rule every time from the um, product rule is because I am incredibly prone to error. And the more um, of a regimented algorithm you can make, the more muscle memory you can put into yourself, the better off you'll be. Plus you only need like a 60% on this test anyway, so I'm sure you're fine. Let f be differentiable such that f of x sine of x dx minus f of x cosine of x plus 4x cubed cosine of x dx. I guess my intonation should have ended, went down on the dx. Which of the following could be f of x? All right. So your spider senses should be kicking off that, all right, this looks familiar. This is integration by parts formula. So what you do is you write up the integration by parts formula. You were probably curious how they can make multiple choice questions using integration by parts. I was wondering the same thing. This is a uh, this is actually a fairly clever way that it is done. All right. So then u v prime equals u v quantity prime to minus u prime v, and then integrating everything, we have integral of u d v equals u v minus v d u integral okay and so if you look this is almost the exact same format we have up, up above so f of x look like looks like it's u yep so maybe if we move this here f of x times negative cosine of x. Then we get a negative here and get a negative with the cosine of x. But other than that, they're pretty straightforward. So we're going to go with this and we're just going to try it out, see what happens. So we're going to say u equals f of x. The 
u prime equals, so looking at this formula, it's going to say that 4x cubed, because that's just where it fits in, and then dv is negative cosine of x. So oops, positive v would be um, sine of x. So the integral of uh, let's see. So the derivative of sine of x is positive cosine of x. And so it's going to mean it's going to have the same sign. So to get negative, we're going to have to have negative sine of x. I'm going to check that on Wolfram. I'm not saying my confidence is shaken, but just in case, just in case, integral of negative cosine of x gives us negative sine of x. Negative sine of x, okay. Yep. So then we put this together, we're going to get f of x dv times negative cosine of x integral equals u times v f of x times negative sine of x. That's supposed to be, see, this is why I check these things. V is in the position right here of cosine of x. So negative cosine of x. And the derivative of negative cosine of x is positive sine of x. There we go. So I had those backwards. Hmm. Slipping, slipping. So, um, cosine of x, the derivative of cosine of x is negative because if you look at zero at the slope, it heads down. And so, we're going to have um, the opposite sign, so sine of x. Okay, I'm good to that. Good to that. So, u, f of x, dv. Where's dv? Oh, dv is down here. Sine of x. Is that right? Okay, that's what we want. Equals u times v. f of x. Got that. Got that. Uh, times v times v. Negative cosine of x. Yep. Minus integral of v du. Negative cosine of x. Positive, positive times du, 4x cubed. dx, probably dx. Yep, yeah, that's exactly what we have up there. Okay, so that, that whole second part was just me checking to make sure everything was reasonable. And now they're asking which of the following could be f of x. So what we do is we which we probably could have done this towards the beginning, and if I was crunched for time, I probably would have just been like, man, probably sort of, kind of, and so, seeing if it worked out. So we have the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, is 4x cubed. So we do integral of 4x cubed, and this is, of course, the power rule. So we do 4x cubed, 3 plus 1 is 4, move down to the bottom, 1 fourth, times 4, cancel, equals x to Mm -hmm. Not x to the ninth. And I know it's sideways, but still no excuse. x to the fourth. So x to the fourth is our answer. Um, some things that would have looked possible here, we don't think it would have been cosine of x or sine of x because for some reason we had a 4x cubed in here and we had to account for that. So it's probably going to be one of these three. It's probably not going to be 4x cubed because just writing out the product rule, we see that that's not right. And then this one looks like a real possibility. But when we distribute the negative sign to the cosine, that makes sense that it's with the cosine. So for this one is 
x to the fourth. Okay, that is the general idea behind um, integration by parts. I know it's a fairly simple rule, but there's lots of nuances involved. Um, and it just takes a little bit of practice. Um, next time, we're going to talk about, uh, I think, logarithm, logarithmic and uh, trigonometric. We're going to talk about trigonometric um, integrals, which don't come up that often, but it's good to at least see them once in life. That way, you know, even though you'll probably panic when you see them, you'll get over your panic and you'll be able to work through and solve the problem. So thank you much for joining me. I will see you guys next time.